from Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. I love it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. One eight hundred five eight hundred ta. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You know we have a great history on this program of uh, of uh, well education. Yeah, I'll call it education. You know, for years we've had a segment on this program called "Ask the Atheist." Of course, we don't have to go out and get an atheist. We've got one in house. Years ago, I had a producer who was willing to let you know he was gay. And uh, we had a segment on this program called Ask the Homo for many years. We got to do that again. I don't care if he's working for a competing station. We should get him in here. Can we find another homo? Can we find another? We could find another homo, but he was so good at it. Because the callers were so aggressively angry. And, and he handled them with a plum. Look it up. Uh, yeah, we had to ask the homo, ask the uh, atheist. Uh, now, uh, this next segment was not my idea. It's a column that is seen in many alternative newspapers across the com- country, like the L.A. Weekly, the O.C. Weekly, the Seattle Weekly, the Dallas Observer. It's all over the country. It is also a book. It's time now for another edition of Ask a Mexican. <laughs> And here is our in-house resident Mexican, Gustavo Ariano. Thank you so much for joining us. Tom, how's it going? I'm doing okay. Great. Now, for people who have not heard you on the program, and you've been here many times now, tell people about your column, how how it started, and then, of course, the, the genesis into a book. The column started as a joke in the OC Weekly. I, uh, OC Weekly is a newspaper in Orange County, California, and it started as a joke between my boss and myself. We work in Orange County, which is the most anti-Mexican place in the United States. Just a lot of ignorance going out there. So we figured, let's do a column where we take people's questions about Mexicans, and then we answer them. If the questions are racist, then you know we treat them with the level of you know idiocy that they are. But if they're legitimate questions, then you answer the questions. So we started that in November of 2004. Then you know, it ended up getting syndicated across the country. It came out as a book. Uh, May of last year, it's going to come out in paperback uh, in a couple of weeks, actually. And the premise is really simple. I'll answer any and all questions you may have about Mexicans. I don't care if they're racist questions, if they're questions about history, about food, about midgets. I will answer the questions. So you don't have to worry about whether the questions are politically incorrect? You don't have to worry about whether you're going to sound like a racist or you're going to sound stupid. Uh, some people are inadvertently racist. They don't even know they are racist. I mean, sometimes they're ignorant because they just don't know any better. Sometimes people say, oh, well, why do Mexicans speak Spanish in the first place? And that's when you explain to them, well, the Spaniards conquered Mexico, so they subjugated all the Indians. And, of course, when you have a conqueror in a country, then they're going to speak the language of the conqueror. So sometimes it's simple. But other times people are just absolutely races flat out like they'll say uh why don't mexicans ever learn english or why are mexicans invading this country so it, it all varies it all varies now of course uh you mentioned orange county and that's very interesting because certainly uh going back decades people thought of orange county as the whitest place on earth other than say utah or idaho but there are many mexicans living now in orange county one of the most mexican cities in the united states the city of santa Ana. it's about 85 percent latino and that's just what the census says i mean, in reality, it's probably more like 90%. And if the demographics continue as they're doing right now, in 30 years, Orange County will be majority Latino. The land of Nixon will be a majority Mexican. 
So of course that probably causes a little bit of concern. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you look at you look at our politicians there. You look at a lot of the anti-immigrant groups there. You have a whole bunch of fervor there. But at the same time, you also have a lot of Mexicans or the children of Mexicans like myself who go up and want to combat that bigotry. Uh, people who grew up, yeah, speaking Spanish and still listen speak Spanish in their lives. But at the same time, they're fully Americans, pay their taxes, all that good stuff that people want Mexicans to do. Mexicans are doing it. Now, uh, I just saw a story the other day on a serious note uh, that uh, I guess the federal government has been compiling statistics about hate groups. Yeah. And I don't know if it's uh, Lou Dobbs, who I consider to be the Howard Beale of CNN, <laughs> uh, Lou Dobbs uh, whipping up a frenzy or whatever, but there are now something like 880, it was some weird round number, like 888 hate groups. It came out through the Southern Poverty Law Center, which tracks these groups all all across the country. They've actually done a lot of exposés about groups in Orange County, and yeah, a lot of that is happening because of the ignorance going out there about Mexicans, specifically Lou Dobbs. He's flat out lied on his show, Count list times and even when activists or the Southern Poverty Law Center asks him to apologize for his lies and shows him how he lied he still won't do it so when you have p- things that people pass off as truth and their lies and you keep repeating them again and again and again then people believe them as gospel and that's where a lot of stereotyping comes from but seriously you know I don't know if you remember the movie Network uh, but uh, here was a movie which was about an anchor man an old crusty anchor man that nobody was watching anymore and he had no ratings and he was getting pressure Sure, they were talking about uh, firing him because he had no rating. And finally, they do fire him, and so he goes on TV and starts saying all kinds of outrageous stuff, and his ratings go up. And, and here you go, uh, 40 years later, you've got this Lou Dobbs, been on CNN since time immemorial, uh, <laughs> doing some boring business report, and nobody knew who he was, and nobody cared. And suddenly, we're because I watch business shows on TV, I watch CNBC, and I was watching CNN, and all of a sudden, this guy's starting to give his opinion about stuff. And I never knew what his opinion was about anything except whether we were going to have a recession or whether unemployment was going up. And suddenly he's on the air giving these really outrageous opinions about immigration. And it, it's almost the exact same story that was predicted uh, 30 years ago. Yeah, Lou Dobbs was somebody who's been on CNN. And also, I, I can't remember if he quit or he was going to do this side project, but he wanted to do something called Space.com, where he really thought that everybody was going to go to his website wanting to learn about NASA and space. And that flopped miserably. Then one day he starts talking about immigration, portrays himself as this friend of the working class guy, as a friend of most of your listeners, but he doesn't care. He, know, he knew that he latched onto something that was going to make him millions of dollars. And so he's continuing to do that. Meanwhile, he's actually married to a Mexican woman whose parents you know, are also Mexicans. I don't, I don't even know if they speak English. I'm not sure. I can't say that. If they did, maybe she'd divorce him. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> if they knew what he was saying on TV. Yeah, it, it, it's it's amazing, though, with Dobbs, how he's tapped into this anti-immigrant sentiment, really stoked the flames. And more importantly, again, he flat out lies on his show. He once said that, you know, illegal immigration has caused 3,000 cases of leprosy in the past 70 years. No, it was 3,000, I think, 300 cases in the past 30 years. And when the Southern Poverty Law Center went up to him and said, you're lying, he wouldn't apologize. And instead, he calls the Southern Poverty Law Center this I can't remember what it was, but some like a propaganda institution, pro illegal alien crap or something like that. It, it, it's disgusting. Wow. We'll take a break. We will come back with your calls. Uh, the column is called Ask a Mexican. The book is called Ask a Mexican. By the way, the book is available online or in stores. Uh, you can see the column in uh, many local alternative papers around the country. And, uh, of course, this segment is called Ask a Mexican. You can call in and talk to Gustavo at 1-800-5800-TOM. And you can ask absolutely any question about Mexicans, no matter how offensive you think the question might be. He will tackle it. Coming up next. Tom Lightis. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Women are the biggest snakes there are. So you might as well get what you can and get rid of them before you get bit. It's the Tom Lightis Show. It's the Tom Lightis Show. And time once again for Ask a Mexican with Gustavo Ariano and your telephone calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let us say hello here to Tyson on the Tom Likas Show. 
Hey, Tom. Hey. I want to know why Mexican and Latino parents don't support their children's education. I thought they came here for a better life for themselves and for their families and for their children, and yet they don't encourage their kids to participate in school. They don't encourage them to do their homework, to get good grades, to go to college. It's almost like they actively discourage them uh, from getting a good education. My wife, my brother, and numerous friends are all teachers, and we get the same story across the board. Can you please explain this? It's, it's, it's a tough thing, man, because I come from that background. And the best way I could explain it to people is this. When you have immigrants coming into this country, ostensibly the reason they come is to better their lives. And, of course, if they have children, you supposedly you want to also have a good life for your children. The problem with a lot of immigrants coming from Mexico, though, is a lot of them don't have any education. They have no clue whatsoever how to succeed in life through education. They don't know the value of education in the United States. So the best way that I've – because I go to high schools all across the country and talk to parents about this, really the best way to tell these parents that, hey, you should care about your children's education is by flat out telling it to them and put it in the most blunt terms, telling them this way. You came to this country supposedly to make a better life for yourself. If you're not telling your children to succeed in school, then frankly, you're a failure. But a lot of people don't want to say that. And even when I say that on the air, a lot of teachers say, oh, well, it's not a Mexican thing. It's a poor person thing and whatever. And I tell them, okay, it might be a poor person thing, but tell them flat out. That's how you'll improve education for Mexican kids. Okay, and also, why are they putting so much pressure on a teenage girl to get pregnant and get married when they're 17? I don't know about that. I've never heard that one before. Who, 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 who puts the pressure to that? Got numerous students that are getting pregnant left and right. And before 17, getting them pregnant before 17? Yeah, yeah. It's like they got baby fever. Their grandmothers and their mothers are telling them they need to get married and get have babies it, it, and start families. They're only 17 years old. Uh, I don't, I've never met those type of people. It's one thing to say, okay, get pregnant and so forth. It's another thing to get married. Here in the United States, we're, we expect children to get married. We tell them, oh, you're going to get married one day as early as five or six years old. Tom talks about it all the time. This expectation that somehow everybody has to get married if you want to be successful in life. It's not a, It's not a Mexican thing at all. All right. Love the show. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Tyson, for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. You know, I think uh, uh, many people who have these very strong feelings about Mexicans would benefit by traveling to Mexico. I think Americans, especially people who live in areas like Southern California or Texas or Arizona, get a skewed view of what Mexico is like and what Mexicans are like. Because the reality, as far as I can tell, having gone to Mexico, is that the people who come here come here because they have needs. They need jobs. They need money for their families. Uh, they need uh, Maybe they need education or they don't have enough education to work in Mexico. Also, uh, in Mexico, uh, racial discrimination is legal. Women have to send headshots in along with their resume in order to get jobs in many places. There are many people who have to come here to get jobs. There's a different uh, mindset, a different group that, that is in Mexico. It's a different beast. It's a different culture. It's like going back to the turn of the century when you had all these Italian male immigrants coming into the United States, start, starting up mafias and living in tenement slums. That would give you a completely skewed sense of what Italian culture was. Th- those people in in the United States, that, that didn't represent any of all Italian cultures. That was poor Italian immigrants trying to make it here in the United States. The so same thing with Mexican immigrants. Sometimes a lot of the, what do you call them, pathologies that some might exhibit, it's, number one, it's not exclusively to Mexican. It's more of a poor person thing than anything. There are blonde Mexicans, and I think most of them stay in Mexico. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of them in Anaheim. you got to tell you that. <laughs> are there really? Oh, yeah. You gotta... I've seen them in Beverly Hills. But uh, Anaheim, yeah, I, I and, hadn't noticed. And these are real blonde Mexicans, not fake blonde Mexicans, because those fake blonde Mexicans are all over the United States now. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's called Ask a Mexican. Let's say hello here to Rob in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Rob. Yeah, I just called in from Portland, Oregon. And uh, I just wanted to... Uh, it, uh, by the way, nice point about not, you know not being in Mexico and uh, you know taking, uh, trying to make a, you know, I, trying to figure out what uh, Mexicans are all about without even visiting their country. I mean, it's uh, you know all those stereotypes that go out the window if you see some of the things I've seen in Mexico. For example, I stayed at a resort in Puerto Vallarta and I was with a woman uh, from Mexico City who was sitting next to me. Uh, she was blonde, 
had fake boobs, wore a Cartier watch, and had children who looked like those spoiled kids you see on the west side of L.A., and she was as Mexican as anybody could possibly be. And you would say to yourself, my God, there's no people like that. Oh, yeah, they are, but they stay in Mexico. They have no need to come here. Well, exactly. You got Mexicans up there in Portland? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, plenty. And, uh, you know, and there, I, 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 there is one thing I want to say before yeah. I get to my question, but they are very family-oriented. Family Every time I hear their music, it's very upbeat and positive and cheerful. They are hard workers, and, um, you know, I think everybody gives them a bad rap because, you know, I mean, not everybody, but uh, it seems like the majority are always bagging on them because they're coming in illegally. Yeah, how, how could you hate think, people who love accordion music? Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, to get to my question, um, the, my my ob observation is that uh, I'm around a lot of different people every day, and, uh, and, and Mexicans play a, a large part in that. And uh, anyway, it's just about the women and their physical appearance as far as their breast size. And uh, I, I've just noticed that just the, your average person, not we're not talking about the Mexicans on soap operas and stuff that are all dolled out, but just your average person that's you know at their house, uh, it seems to me that almost more than 80% of the Mexican women have extremely small breasts. And I what? what? <laughs> Dude, you're going into to, into the wrong neighborhoods, man. Haven't you heard no, that? No, no, no. no, no. It, 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 maybe it's compared to the women in Portland. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> because it doesn't look that way here in L.A. Yeah. Really? Mexican women are famous for their curves. I mean, great ass, you know, great breasts. It, it, it's... It's a stereotype, but, but one that's born from authenticity. I, Mexican women, I, I can't tell you, I can't even say a single Mexican woman who's a woman that I know that had an A cup. At the very least, a B cup, if not C and above. Oh, dude, you, well, do you know what? If you're into Mexican women, then don't come up to Oregon. Yeah, you're getting the wrong kinds up there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's freakishly. I mean, you, you just look around, and it's just weird because there's, I, w I would say, more than 80%. Are you sure they're Mexican? Oh, positive. They could be Guatemalan, you know. Well, they could yeah. be from Costa Rica. Now, I just got back from Costa Rica, and mm -hmm. and uh, I was there for 10 days. Those were some of the smallest-breasted Hispanic women I've ever seen, mm. except for Spain, in my entire life. Wow. <laughs> Spain, too, by the way. But yeah, Spain doesn't that's count. Something. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, uh, seriously, man. Up in Portland, I guess you're getting the wrong type of Mexican women because here in Southern California, uh, you know, all the mixed race couples is testament to the fact that Mexican women do have good breasts. Okay, so you're mixing in the races. So it's not like 100% Mexican then is what you're talking about with the large breasts? No, no, no. I'm saying that you're getting the wrong type of Mexican women up there. I don't, Or if they are Mexican women, because, again, here in Southern California, growing up, you usually it's the Mexican girls who have the, you know, are the curvier ones, much more so than a lot of white girls, for that matter, or definitely Asian girls, too. Wow. Yeah, man. You got to move down here, man. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, boys. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate the, what a strange question. Uh, it's the, I think that's the most bizarre question I've ever heard. More lies than anything there. Wow. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Barbara on the Tom Lika show for our guest Gustavo Ariano. Hello. Hi. Um, it's Barbara. Um, Tom, I do love you, though I don't agree with you most of the time. But I was wondering why do these? I work in a hospital, and why do these Mexicans come in? They either don't know how to speak, and they've been here for twenty years. They don't know how to speak. Or they don't know how to speak English. Oh, okay. okay. And I just wanted to make sure. You, and they shake their head as you're trying to explain something to you to them. They don't have a clue what you're talking about, or they bring their six-year-old or seven-year-old child to interpret. I mean, I gave directions to a woman about her child's eardrops, and as she walked away, it turned out she didn't know a word of English, but she kept shaking her head and going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Why, why would they do that? She's trying to be polite to you, number one. Number two, if they're using their six- or seven-year-old to translate, duh, it's because they don't know English, and the child does do that. I'm not saying that's appropriate, but that's the reason why they're doing it, as to why... why do they, don't they uh, take uh, the time to learn? Uh, well, it, that's what I was about to get to you. May, how long? You don't know how long they've been in this country. If they've been yeah. in this country one, two, three three years, maybe 10, 15 years. Hey, every person, according to their own uh, timeline, they learn the language, and some people learn it faster than other people. But you really shouldn't hold it against them if they really don't know if they don't know it. Well, I think what we should do is is give green cards. Depending on your age, your green card expires if you don't learn a certain amount of English by, like, say, five years if you're in your 20s. Oh, it 
10 years if you're in your 40s or 50s. Honey, if, if, if we answer... Insist- not be able to speak and have it be detrimental to your health is not a benefit to you. Honey, if we did that, half of the Jewish grandmothers for most of these people would be back in Israel right no, now. We're not talking about Jewish... We're well, talking oh, about we're talking about Mexicans, right? Okay, 20, 30 year olds who have been in this country for 10, 15 years because we have patients who keep coming back to us who still can say hello and goodbye. That is wrong. I, I agree with you, but I'm saying it, it, it's easy to talk the talk when you say they should learn English immediately, but let's dump you in another country and let's see how fast you pick up the language. Hello. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, I just wanted to ask the guy, uh, you know, I grew up in a pretty much, a, a, you know, a Mexican community my whole life. There, there was other groups of people there, too, but, you know, I know the culture, I speak the language and everything. And, si lo hablas uh, bien? Know, I'm a faithful listener of Tom Likas, Likas 101, but to my question is, is that I've done good with every group of women except Mexican women, and I want to know why is it that a Mexican chick, most of the, not all the time, generally speaking, would rather be with a wife beaten wearing beer drinking loser without a job than be with a white guy with a job. Hey white man, you, it comes down probably to how you uh, treat them in bed. Honestly, that that could probably okay, be the only so thing. How is it that I've done good with every other group of women, eights, nines, and tens, but this group is the most closed off? What's the problem? Uh, may I say that this is the group I've had the most success with, the most. I know you have, Tom, and I, I, I I've always heard you say that, and I your your screener. I've tried calling before on your show, and he's refused to let me on. So by exception, you know, because, you know, you have your uh, your friend on there for Ask the Mexican so I could get through to ask this question. So I, I don't think it's true. Well, I, I, I think it's, it's a, I think it's a problem you have. I don't think it's a, it's a it's, general problem. No, you, you see a lot of Mexican women marrying, in fact, ignoring Mexican men, period. I, I get a lot of questions a lot of times from Mexican men saying, why are you know Mexican women going out with white, successful lawyers? And my answer is you answered it yourself. They're going out with a white, successful person, somebody who's successful. They're not going to go out with somebody who's, uh, you know, as you said, a wife-beating, beer-drinking, whatever. Honestly, man, it's down to you, man, because, yeah, it's I, down to you. It just it seems kind of odd to me that... It you requires know, a certain approach, of Mike. Would provide this type of bad luck, and I've been to all the communities here in L.A. where there's met lots of Mexican chicks. It's not that I haven't had a date with any of them. I've been out with lots, and there seems to be this dynamic. You want to get with a Mexican girl, don't you? What's that? You want to get with a Mexican girl because you've been. You said you've been with eights, nines, and tens. Hey, most guys would kill to be with an eight, nine, and ten. And here you are bitching about not being able to get with a Mexican girl. Man, you you got to know where you're at, man. Dude, there's no doubt about it. I, I'm not. I didn't call up to say bad things about Mexico. No, I'm not saying this that either. Particular, this particular side of the coin that has me, you know, kind of curious and frustrated. Just it seems kind of odd to me, you know, that you know you roll up somewhere, whether it be Boyle Heights, South LA, or whatever. You speak the language. You have friends down there, and it seems like that group of women seems to just want to gravitate towards their own. Hon- honestly, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. My experience has been the exact opposite. I will say that there is a certain approach that you have to use that's different from almost every other woman out there. It's different. It's a different way of approaching it. If you're the kind of guy who doesn't like meeting somebody's family, uh, you're not willing to go to their house and see how they live, uh, if you are not willing to uh, spend a that little... That poses another question for me. Why is it, too, that this has also happened to me a couple times, not all the time, but uh, quite enough to... Uh, like at Christmas get-togethers or Thanksgiving dinners, there's always one idiot that has to bring up the question of immigration and try and poke to find out what it is, why it is white people don't, you know, are, you know, don't want Mexican people here or whatnot, or you know, something along those. Just lines. one? I would figure the entire family, man. <laughs> What's that? I would figure the entire family. Just one idiot? I think a whole the whole family would be peppering you with uh, those when questions. I've gone to get- Together's before, not I, I. never had that where the whole family would start asking that question. There'd always be somebody that didn't know, you know, social et- etiquette or something like that. Would be so, you know, what do you think? You know, and try and work their way into some kind of political argument. But, but or, why? Why are you intimidated by that? 
You know, I've had that question. I have been in people's backyard having carne asada on a Sunday afternoon and had people ask me that question. But you know Not what? A typical question that you ask at a family. I, I, that, let me tell you something. That's a question people talk about all the time in Mexican families. And when they no, have somebody, somebody there, that, when they, they have they somebody there, they, they, they can ask that question. They ask the question, well, why are you intimidated by that? Why don't you answer it? I do answer it. And, wh and what are you worried is going to happen? Do you have a, do you have an opinion that would offend people? No. Okay. I'm just telling you. I grew up in a Mexican neighborhood. I understand all of that, that. But why? So why do but why is it in that? It's uh, there's always got to be somebody, not all the time, but a lot of the time. That's got to drill the white guy on that issue. Don't you so see like, again? Is you you you, you sound like the victim here. He's projecting. You sound like I see. I can hear your problem. You sound like the victim here. People have come at me with that question. They've come at Mexican people have come at me with that question, and I have answered the question. And and you know what? Once I have answered the question, that's the end of it. Do Do you like the Lakers? Do I like the Lakers? Do you like the Lakers? No. Do Do you like a, a sports team? Yeah, I like sports. <laughs> okay, when you hang out with friends, do you talk about things that you like or things that concern you? Well, sure. Well, exactly. So I'm sorry. Even look, even when white people are not there, Mexicans talk about immigration a lot because guess what? It's a pretty big issue nowadays with I Mexicans. Know it's a big issue. Here's another. It's here's another all, thing to know. Here is another thing. Here's another. Th about hey, there's another cultural. You see, these are cultural differences. Do you know most other countries? And it's not just Mexicans, by the way, because I traveled and I spent most of last summer in Europe. People talk about politics more than we do. If you watch the news on Spanish language TV, it's all on international news. Different I countries, know, the, including no countries, it, including countries that don't on. speak Spanish. People from Mexico have an interest in what's happening in the world that Americans don't have. And the result is they're more likely to talk about political issues than Americans are. And you okay, shouldn't be intimidated by it. I have a sister. If she brought a Mexican boyfriend over, I wouldn't ask, why is it that so many of your people can't have birth control and won't practice birth <laughs> it's control? Not it's not the same. Five, six, and seven it's kids. not the same. Why would you ask him that in the same. first place, Tom, though? You, you, Tom, you, it, it, you, you're, you're, you're comparing apples and oranges here. It's too No, no, I'm same. talking about people talking about politics. When I was in Italy last year, all That's people want all That's people wanted to... It is a political yeah, immigration is a political issue. Yes, it is, and it's a political issue that affects Mexicans. I don't think he's there anymore. I'm here. Oh, there you well, respond to that then. <laughs> when I was in Italy last year, I everybody I met said, "How do you people elect a president like Bush? The guy's an idiot. How do you elect a guy like this?" And then he goes out declaring war, and the rest of the world is against him. And he goes out, and I every I'm out wine tasting, and people wanted to talk about that. The reason is, is it's a cultural difference. Americans hate talking about politics. They hate talking about the news. Most Americans are not well informed and don't care about other countries. They don't care about concerns of other countries, other cultures. They don't care. That's why Americans only speak one language, because we don't care. And when you are with Mexicans, you're talking to people who have the same interests as people from other countries. All, all other countries that I know of I are interested in talk. Everybody. They talk, talk about politics. Speak a you, you said different languages. I grew up in. Southern I'm not California. talking about life. you. I'm talking about Americans, and this is a cultural difference that people from other countries talk about politics as part Mom, of talking and getting lesson. to know. I really don't. I know how it is. No, here. you I don't. don't. Clearly, if you knew, you would be dating Mexican girls, which you don't, and I do. Tom, do you speak Spanish? I understand and read Spanish. I can't speak it. How is it that I speak the language and I grew up here? I Be longer because you go to the Home Depot to pick up your workers. That's why you speak Spanish. I mean, come on. I, half the racists I know exploit Mexicans and they know how to speak Spanish. It doesn't tell me anything about whether somebody is culturally sensitive. You just got done saying most people here don't speak a second language. And I most I people don't. I, that has nothing to do with you. I'm talking about a, the cultural differences. I've had enough. Uh, Jesus. I was trying to talk to him in Spanish, but he never responded. <laughs> I don't think he speaks Spanish. No, not at all. Not he knows how to say hop in the truck <laughs> and $5 an hour. That's what he knows how to say. That's about it. Yeah. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Ask a Mexican. More of your telephone calls are coming up. 
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ask a Mexican with our guest, Gustavo Ariano. See his column in the OC Weekly, the LA Weekly, Seattle Weekly, Dallas Observer. See the book, Ask a Mexican. It's available online and in stores, and the paperback is coming out soon. Just saw a story this week in Mexico uh, where there is a particular municipality now that is running buses for women only. Yep. Because it says there that when women ride on a, a regular bus, they get groped. What is that all about? Mexicans are grabby, grabby, just like their Japanese and uh, Brazilian brothers. I'm really? actually, I'm actually surprised that hasn't happened yet in the United States. And probably the reason why is, with the exception of maybe uh, you know the bigger cities. A lot of people don't use the buses. They don't use the subways. And in Mexico, specifically Mexico City, it's so damn congested, a lot of the people just always do that. And if you put a man next to a woman, eventually, I'm sorry, the man's going to win out, and he's going to do uh, – he's going to try to uh, cop a feel. Amazing. Now I've got two delicate issues I'm going to bring up to you, and I don't mean delicate in terms of being politically incorrect. I mean delicate in terms of some people are going to find these to be delicate topics. But I'm going to go right in. Um I have never, I'm going to say never, never dated a Mexican girl who uses birth control. Ever. Hmm. Now, if it's second or third generation American, yes. But if she was born in Mexico, no. No. Why not? Catholic Church tells you if you use contraception, it's evil and it's against God and therefore you're going to do it. And even, even so though... So is having sex with me. <laughs> ah, again, it's that uh, animal instinct in all of us that eventually takes over. I, I, even if you did use contraception, though, the Mexican spermatosa is the strongest spermatosa in the world, and no condom can hold back Mexican <laughs> sperm. The Border Patrol can't hold us back. You think a condom's going to do it? Come on. <laughs> and here's another one. Uh, tampons. Now, I was told by a Mexican woman I dated that the reason she and other Mexicans did not use tampons was of a fear of people at the drugstore knowing that you are sexually active because you're using tampons. So they use pads and other methods rather than tampons. That, that's kind of the truth from what I've heard from you know my Mexican female friends, because I wouldn't – of course, I wouldn't know it myself, is that – Old school Mexican women, they wouldn't do that because you're sticking something up your you-know-what, and therefore that's digital penetration. Therefore, that means you're sexually active. As screwed as that uh, logic is, that's really what governs a lot of uh, Mexican women's minds. And so, of course, a mom teaches a daughter, okay, you're not going to do this because then that means you're a whore. You're going to use a pad. And so even to this day, a lot of women will continue to use a pad because that's what their mom told them to do. Wow. And so it's not so much – So I'm not imagining this stuff. It's no, true. no, no. I mean so many of my friends – when they started out, at least the stories they tell me, they started off with a pad, but then once they get more assimilated, and of course they do get assimilated, they start using the tampons. And then there's one that we talked about for an hour on the air without you here, but I'll bring it up to you now. Dishwashers. What's the deal with dishwashers? Uh, by the way, it's not just Mexican women. It's Hispanic women in general have a thing about dishwashers. They won't use a dishwasher when there is a dishwasher. That is such a cop out. Dishwash to me, the dishwasher is one of the dumbest inventions ever because it's really when you if you're gonna eat off the plate, you might as well clean it as well. Why are you gonna leave it to something else to do it for yourself on your own? And especially in Mexico, where the concept is so foreign as to have a dishwasher. But you know what my it, response to that is: Do you wash your clothes on a rock? A lot of Mexican women did. I mean, within here, a generation. <laughs> I mean, here, you know, in the San Fernando Valley, do you get on a rock or a, you get on a washboard? But a, a lot of Mexican, actually, a lot of Mexican women, they do pull out the washboard just like their moms. They taught it again with assimilation. Then you learn how to use a dishwasher. Then you do the laundromat and all that stuff with assimilation. But a lot, like my mom, up until, geez, uh, maybe. Ten years ago or so, uh, she would get everything on the washing board, get her knuckles scraped red and raw, and she would still do it. And you ask her, why she, Why do you do it that way? And she said, mm, that's just the way I did it. I know, know many women who use a washing machine and they go to the laundromat. 
but they would not use a dishwasher. <laughs> Old habits die hard. <laughs> really hard. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mike on the Tom Likas Show for Gustavo. Hello. Hey, Professor, I got a question, maybe a little sensitive here. Uh, based on the elections, I'd like to ask your guest, why is it turning out that Mexican people are more prejudiced against blacks than white people? It's not so much prejudice, and you're asking the question wrong. The question you have to ask is, why are Mexicans voting for Hillary Clinton more than they are doing for Barack? Because Mexicans are voting for Barack Obama. The most Here in California, I think two-thirds of uh, Latinos, uh, of course we all know that means Mexicans, voted for Hillary. And same that same stat happened in Texas as well. But here's the interesting thing. For voters under 30, Latino voters under 30, they voted for Obama. Latino voters over 30, they voted for Hillary. And here's the answer I always give. Look, Mexicans, there is, you know, there's always going to be tension between African Americans and Mexicans because in Mexico, there is a, a, there's a stereotyping of blacks. But when it comes here in the United States, Mexican voters are just going to be like anybody else. And specifically with Hillary Clinton, that's somebody that we've known. We've known the Clinton name since 1992. I only heard about Barack, what? Two years ago, and you know, let alone my parents, they probably only heard about it a couple of months ago. So, can you really expect people who have never heard of Barack Obama to immediately vote for them and not vote for Hillary? Well, he might be referring to a show we did. We got a uh, an email from a self proclaimed Mexican American who said, uh, "Of course, Latinos are supporting Hillary Clinton because Mexicans would vote for anybody to prevent a black guy from becoming president." Who, yeah, who was a mayor of Los Angeles for more than twenty years? A black guy, Tom Bradley. If Magic Johnson ran for mayor of Los Angeles tomorrow, he'd destroy Antonio Villaraigosa. Mexicans are going to vote for the best politician, and whether it be black, brown, white. If Mexicans only voted on account of race, then why didn't they vote for Bill Richardson as president? Why did he drop out even, geez, long before the California? a lot of Mexicans don't know he's Mexican. <laughs> that, that too, yeah. <laughs> that could, that's a good point there. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Tom on the Tom Likas show. The word Tom has appeared more in a five-second period than you'll ever hear it again. Hello. Hey, Tom, this is Tom in Granada Hills. Long yes, Tom. Listener. Thank you, Tom. Um, I wanted to ask our Mexican expert there, how come the Amigos leave their toilet paper all over the floor and what maybe the rest of us can do to get them to stop it? The great, Probably the best question ever. I've, at, I've had this question asked a lot of times. As I talked about earlier in the show, a lot of Mexicans, they came to this country recently or, you know, the past couple of years, so they're coming a lot of times from rural environments. And in rural environments, hello, you're not going to have the most, uh, you're not going to have much civilization. In Mexico, you're not supposed to flush the toilet paper, whether it's soiled or not. You're not supposed to flush it because it's going to clog up the drains. So uh, when you come to another country, you're going to continue doing that tradition. So it's really responsibilities like yourself, Tom, to teach these uh, Mexicans, these backward Mexicans, that here in America we're civilized and we flush our soiled toilet paper into the ocean. you got to do that, man. <laughs> you mean it's my job to tell them that? Yeah, it is your job to tell them that, yes. Because oh, I thought maybe you were there. Well, first, first you'd have to know which Mexican left the toilet paper on the floor, so you might have to go around the office asking, excuse me. Yeah. Is that your toilet paper on the floor of the bathroom? And then once you narrow it down to which person's toilet paper was on the floor, then you could tell. Yeah. Well, hey, well, thanks a lot, Tom. It was a great show. <laughs> Thank you. We're civilized here. I don't think he's going to do that. No. one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom Here's Bazell on the Tom Likas show for Gustavo Ariano. Hello. Yes. I'd like to find out uh, why do Mexicans take freshly washed clothes and hang them out on tree branches or on chain link fences or on wooden fences instead of putting up a clothesline or taking them to a laundromat. Is it a cultural thing or what? They're just they're drying the clothes. That's what it boils down to. But the, the tree branches and the chain link hey, fences dude, are Matt, dirty. That's a place where you could hang anything. If you have to stick out your arm to hang, a clo hang some clothes, you're going to do it if it's wet. If they can't go to the laundromat, they probably can't afford going to the laundromat. By the way, I had by the way, I had ru I had Russian neighbors in in my multi-million dollar neighborhood of the Hollywood Hills who do the same thing. They were fresh out of Russia and uh, they were drying their clothes out in the sun on their terrace, just laying them out there. When you got you, when you got to dry clothes, you got to dry clothes, man. That's what it boils down to. 1-800-5800-TOM. Real quickly here, Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. I got two. One quick one. Why swimming in your clothes at the beach? <laughs> in a bathing suit. And why do Mexican women really dig Hummers more than, and a Hummer's the car, more <laughs> than, say. Uh, say, other 
you know, bling vehicles like Porsches, Mercedes, whatever. Second question first. Mexican people, period, love huge cars. Whether it's an Impala, whether it's a bomb, whether it's a truck, whether it's a Hummer, they just like huge, huge cars. The, se- the first question, now, why do Mexicans go into the ocean with their clothes on? Modesty, man. A lot of us have a lot of roles. We want to hide those roles. We're not like gabachos. You know, gabachos, they don't mind showing off their big bellies and all that stuff. So they go in with little Speedos going in there. We don't do that. <laughs> Gustavo Ariano, the column is Ask a Mexican. The book is Ask a Mexican. Always good to see you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. The Tom Likas Show.